How'd you get into climbing? So the first time I went climbing, I went to an amazing Girl Scout camp in Northern uh -huh. Maine, and they had an actual big house-sized boulder on their property. Uh, and you know, you do archery, you do arts and crafts, and then it's time to do your rock climbing. And at the time, my counselor said, this might be really hard for you with one hand. We understand you want to sit this out. And that just lit a fire under me that right. was just like, yeah. oh, you think I can't do it? Well, then just watch me. Let me show you. Exactly. And then it turned out I actually really liked it. Like, yeah. getting to the top of that little puny boulder, I was just hooked instantly. So you're not afraid of heights? No, I am very much afraid you of heights. I hate to fall. No Absolutely. way. Well, I, that's why I use the ropes. You can't be afraid of heights <laughs> and do what you do. There's no possible way. No, you I, conquer it, your fears. Yeah, it's a healthy fear. It's kind yeah. of training your, like, how to turn off your primate brain and right. be like, I'm actually totally fine. Like, this, this fall, the rope will catch me. Yeah. Uh -huh. It'll be fine. I'm a huge yes. primate, so this is probably Yeah, it could be an issue for you I, then. I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's so you, terrified of heights. I know. So, so you, interesting thing about you is you don't want to be known as the one-handed climber. Correct, yeah. You just want to be known as a great climber. Yeah, like, I, you know, one of the reasons I push myself to climb harder and harder and harder is because I don't want to be good for a one-handed climber or good for a girl. I just want to right. be the best climber that I can be overall. Absolutely. You have a story about cutting a stake. As a kid, right? Yeah, so I think the attitude came from my parents. They would, you know, give me my steak for dinner and then refuse to cut it for me. And they would be just like, you know, learn how to do it yourself, adapt. Yeah. And then one day my mom said, well, what are you going to do? Just like marry a guy to cut your steak? Ah. And I did, actually. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm a steak cutter. Yeah, my husband still cuts my steaks. So. <laughs> and you talked about that experience in camp that really lit the fire, but do mm -hmm. you think if you had both hands, you would be doing this as well? You know, I don't think so, because, um, you know, rock climbing's cool, and it's, you know, it, intense, but, you know, it's just been another random experience. But I think because someone with one hand shouldn't rock climb, that's why I really liked it. I like yeah. doing what I'm not supposed to do. I'm a little stubborn. Right. So. <laughs> right. So that was really what kind of drove me forward. And adapting to climbing, you see, you, do, you, do you wrap your left side with tape? I do, I wrap it with tape, mm -hmm. um, and then I just kind of, you know, shove it into cracks or push down on things. I'm really lucky I was born without my hand, so I don't have any scar tissue or no. anything to hurt. It just, I can plug and chug and go. All right, the documentary Stump follows Mo through the highs and lows of her sport. We saw you fall in that clip. Have you ever been hurt climbing? Um, in college, I broke my ankle once, um, wow. but that's pretty rare. Like, it's actually a really safe, controlled sport. You're in charge of all your decisions. How many takes did it take to conquer that? So I tried, I tried that route over the course of eight months, and I was probably up there about 50 different times. Wow. So, wow. yeah. It, Keep pushing through. Yeah, and the cool thing about climbing is that one wasn't, it wasn't hard because it wasn't strong enough. It was hard mm -hmm. because it was a puzzle. It had to unlock yeah. the balance and unlock the move. And, oh, yeah. But when you do that, then you're just like, well, why didn't I do that six months ago? Right. But, but <laughs> how did it feel yeah. when you made it to the top? You know, it was a little anticlimactic because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it was like 7 o'clock in the morning, and it was just me and my partner and the camera guy, and I get up to the top, and it was just over. Like, you know, there's no fireworks. There's no band that plays. Right, there's, right. there's no one there to high-five me. You just clip the chains and it's quiet, and that's you're just already peaceful? thinking of your next one. It's peaceful, but I'm just already thinking, well, that's okay. over now. What's next? It's, bitter, it's bittersweet. Yeah. It's like this thing has been my best friend and my worst enemy for eight months. Yeah. Now what? Is that, <laughs> is that a constant reality for you, where every time you conquer a monument, <laughs> it's what's next for me now? Is that like almost like torture? Yeah, and life? that's the cool thing about climbing is not only can you, can you climb, you can always climb harder, you can always climb smarter, and there's different styles of climbing. I recently just went on my first month-long expedition to northern Canada. Oh, that wow. was beautiful. That was just like... Full on expedition, 2,000 foot face, something I'd never done before, um, but it was still rock climbing, so it was really cool. But you're always looking for the next thing. Always every time looking you for a way to grow, yeah.